Hi, welcome to the Twelfth House Podcast. I'm Michelle Palazon, your co-host and the head witch in charge here at Holisticism. Hello, and I am Wallace, your other co-host. And welcome to the pod. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. We've got a fun little episode today. We got our whole team together. We went to Joshua Tree on a little team retreat, and it was so fun. We had such a great time. We did a lot of ideating and intuiting and just hanging out and exploring the desert and looking for aliens, and it was really fun. And we decided to record a team podcast in person together. And honestly, this is kind of like you get to be a fly on the wall in one of our silly, goofy mood conversations. We talked about some social media drama going down on our Instagram channel. Um, Instagram channel? Is that right? Sure. Who cares? Millennial. (laughs) Uh, Instagram feed. And we gave you a little sneak peek of something that we've been workshopping that's going to be dropping soon. And we go into our Wellness House of Cards. Wallace, do you want to explain what the Wellness House of Cards is? Um, I would just like to caveat that, you know, we had a little to drink. Me, myself, and I are really going hard in the podcast, so you will notice I'm slurring my words a little bit. And (laughs) we had a lot of fun. The kombucha got to me, but we discussed our wellness health. It's so hard to say. (laughs) Maybe we need to change the name. Wellness House of Cards. And basically this started as a discussion one day when Michelle and I were talking about what was keeping us alive that week. It was a particularly stressful, hard week for some reason. And we started to list off all of the things that were keeping us there, present, alive, functioning. (laughs) And then we kind of spiraled into this conversation about, you know, it's always a combination of things, a holistic approach of these things that you're using to cope to stay in these bodies on earth and try and live a good life. And we decided, you know what, this is kind of like your wellness house of cards. It's always one thread away or one gust of wind away from falling apart, but it's keeping you together. (laughs) One open window away from just, yeah, all crumbling down. But right now, look, keeps you looking good and feeling fine. Yeah. So we're workshopping this and there is something coming soon along these lines. So keep a lookout. Enjoy the episode. Don't judge us too much for our consumerism. We love you and we'll see you on the internet. Hi, I'm here with the amazing Holisticism team, IRL. Hey! (laughs) So let's go around the table and say who's here for our new listeners. Hello. Hi, I'm Wallace. And so happy to have you here. What do you do? I do the content development strategy, wear 10 hats, you know, mm-hmm. it's that kind of vibe. Yep. And we have... I'm Janelle. Hello. For those who don't know me, I basically take care of the community and answer all questions. You don't need to know my official title. Look at that. It's fine. But I'm happy to be here. And then we have... Hey, I'm Stace. I'm the social media manager here. What's up? And we're all in Joshua Tree in a dome. Literally. Very close to the Integratron. We've been here for the last couple of days as our team of treat because we've never been all in the same place, not on Zoom because Stace is in Canada and it was time. It's time for us to connect and also disconnect from sort of like normal worky vibes and do some big picture visioning, do some brainstorming IRL and just like fucking have fun. Yeah. You know, have Emphasis fun. Emphasis on the fun. Yeah. Do dub shit. Soak in a quartz tub. Yeah. <laughs> Under the moon. Talk about aliens. Right. Which we haven't well, seen yet. in the aliens, which tonight might be the night. <laughs> I kind of hope not, but <laughs> I'm scared of them. No, come on, Michelle. I'm scared of them. I, I have my sleep paralysis That's already. Fair. And That's fair. I don't, I don't. Yeah. I'm also still on the fence of a few things on that topic. Janelle and I on this side of the table, we're believers. <laughs> we're ready. Total believers. <laughs> Ready, willing, I've been waiting for this all my life. Beam us up. Well, I'm not going to go that far. Scotty <laughs> is ready to beam. Just come hang. Don't beam. Yeah, yeah. Engage I just want to hang out. initiation. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's interesting to be back. I was in Joshua Tree in April, and I didn't spend much time in the town, but I was here before COVID. Whoa, and really? Pre-COVID? Right before, right? I thought, or no. In April? No, no, no. No, no, no. 
I was here during COVID okay. and pre-COVID. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's like, I come here a lot. I just hang out. <laughs> no, but we noticed the explosion of pro-alien content in the town of Joshua Tree in the Yucca Valley. It was. Like, every shop had yeah. an alien theme or, like, a lot of alien products, and they were very pro Grays. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Deserts are where the alien things happen. Yeah. And I true. feel like, you know, the Integratron has been around for a while and is like a site and they say that aliens came down and like gave the guy the blueprints and yeah. like build this thing. They did. No, and they held, okay. they used to hold alien conventions there. He oh. actually started alien. Con- yeah. The guy, David, at the store that we were at, shout out to David. He didn't give me a last name, but wine and rock shop. If you, you don't need a last rock name, shop, exactly. Mm-mm. Just say hi to him for me. But he showed me uh, pictures of the convention that they would hold, started wow. by the guy George. When did this something? happen? We were in the store for like ten minutes. I was talking to him for most of the time, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was curious if he had had any alien encounters, and wow. apparently he had had. He'd seen quite a few UFOs in his lifetime. I love it. Yeah, Shell's face right now. <laughs> I'm sure he has. <laughs> no, that's great. That's awesome. Cool. So we're here to connect with the aliens. <laughs> that's why we're here. Uh-uh. In case you're wondering. Yeah. Again, no. I was like, not I do not it. consent. No, 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 no. That's not why I'm here. But if it happens, cool. Ish. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. I. <laughs> Listen, I feel like I need to defend myself here. I believe in aliens, okay? I believe in them. Like, I fully believe in them. But do I want them to abduct me? No. No. No, no. We just want to wave at them. Yeah. I just need, I just want to have a visible, visual, like, tangible interaction. And I say interaction, I mean, like, from afar. Like, a far ish where I so imagine I'll feel scared. Is what you would prefer? No feet. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> Get out of here. We're in the United States yeah, now. Yeah. So I I prefer about 200 feet. I think that's close enough for right now. And then we can get closer and closer. I don't know how far that is, if I'm going to be real. Like, my mind can't It's like, 200 sounds okay. Like, and say hi and be like, I knew you existed, and thank you for showing yourself. It's, it feels mythical your whole life, but you know it exists, and, like, only a few people get to see it. Is, that, is there anything else you can compare that to? Love? No, I'm just kidding. I was going to say, something about <laughs> men and orgasms. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that might happen. But we've been here enjoying our time, yeah. enjoying each other. It's been nice. It's been fun. I sent a photo to someone who was like, what are you doing? In Joshua Tree, I was like, we're doing a team brainstorm. They're like, is that what brainstorms look like in L.A.? <laughs> yes. And First I was like, off, we're not in L.A. Rude. Actually. Yeah. What do you Are mean you in that? New Yorker? Yes. Second off, I was like, you know what? Relax concentration for innovation. Ooh. I don't. It sounds corny as well. No, that's great. But I think mm-hmm. it's true. Yeah. We've been snacks, having lots of potions, brainstorming, jumping on the trampoline, and it's provided a lot of just creative energy and flow for the brainstorm. Yeah. Listen, this isn't just like for now, you know, like the work that whatever work we're doing, it's not like, oh, let's get the most done in this 72, however many hours we are together. It's like all the seeds that we plant here will continue to grow and flourish as we work together remotely or in LA or wherever. So it's okay that we spent like four hours shopping today. You know, like it's actually great. That's good. We want to be inspired and talk to each other and experience things together and find like common ground because that's going to inform everything else that we do. Exactly. You know, it's not like directly correlate (laughs) to output, you know, I don't know. It's not linear, man. Everyone sounds so eloquent, but I'm here for the snacks <laughs> and, and the thousands of kombuchas that we have. So Hard kombucha, soft kombucha, whatever you want. Literally thousands, but not literally, but you get the idea. <laughs> so we're here. We're queer. We're having fun. And we're working on things and making cool things for you. And we just appreciate that you listen to this podcast. And if you made it this far, great. Uh, boy, oh boy, have we got some good stuff for you. Not only in the future, but right now. <laughs> we promise. <laughs> Let's get into it, shall we? We played a really fun game last night called What Do You Meme? Yeah. It was a lot of fun. And we also play this almost every week as a team. As a team, exactly. (laughs) We're like, we just. Then then we played What Do You Meme this morning, where I was like, I'm going to go pee. You guys figure out how to make this. Figure out what the caption is. (laughs) Figure it out. And then we were pleasantly surprised by a meme that we had posted on our Instagram that got a a lot of buzz, a lot of passionate opinions about that meme. Yes. (laughs) And just to pull it back for a second, if you're ever blocked creatively, I think one of the best things you can do is challenge yourself 
fun with a friend. Bring a friend or a coworker or whoever and try and just like meme any photo. It could mm-hmm. be literally anything. It could be a photo on your phone of your friend. It's something that we do as a warm up when we're just trying to get into the groove of creating. And we do this in Notion for Magical Baddies, Systems and Spells, and oh, yeah. Digital, Digital Alters. Alters. It's just such a good warm up. That's what we were doing this morning. We were trying to caption a TikTok that Michelle had made. And can I also just say really quickly, someone who has personally felt blocked creatively for a little while, that like, I was very intimidated when we started this meme exercise situation because I was like, everybody's so funny. Like, this team is so funny. And I can be funny, too, but I have to think really, really hard for a very, very long time nowadays. You're simmer. You're like a, you know, yeah. a stew. I'm a stew. Too. Yeah, I like to stew. But it has really helped me. Or I find it fun. I, I won't say it's helped me yet, though. I do feel like I've gotten better at it over the last like few times that we've done it. But it definitely makes me feel more confident in my ability to come up with shit. And it's also taught me to not really hold anything too precious right mm-hmm. like just get all the shit out some of it might be bad or like bad is like it's a perspective it's get relative. the bad shit out too exactly, yeah. like, get, exactly. It out. Gotta just get it out it. get it all out so i very much have appreciated this exercise can i describe the meme please so it's a meme of kim kardashian's snl experience and it's <laughs> what's that word <laughs> that's <was> nice <laughs> experience her pretending to be Courtney Kardashian and somebody from SNL, I don't know who that is, uh, pretending to be Trap. Kind of that guy um, that you don't know his name and he's been on <laughs> SNL for like 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. He's, he's Frankie, good Frankie Day. I think his name is Frankie okay, Day. Okay. Yeah, Shout out to Frankie Day, one of the best <laughs> You're a real one. On SNL. <laughs> You're just, so good we don't even know your name. You're that guy. He's great. That guy. Oh, yeah. But, okay, so like the... The Walmart version of Travis Barker. Yes, he is a baby daddy. So we were thinking about imposters or fakes. And not quite right. You know, something's a little bit off about this. It's not exactly the whole story. So that was a meme. The tagline for this meme was things posing as wellness for 500. And what we were really highlighting in this meme is... We're on the bandwagon of red flags, which is all over the internet right now, and things that we hear in the wellness industry that wade into territory that might be harmful, damaging, or slightly ableist and victim blamey. So we posted this meme. It was pretty tame. It was funny. It was on brand. But the people, some of them, had a bit of a problem with one it. person <laughs> yeah there's always one there's always one you know what's funny is there's like i was just looking at this right now and there's well over a thousand likes and we're stuck on the one person who was being like obtuse and totally did not understand the humor also for the feed that's a pretty good number that's yeah, really good honestly, that's very good that's honestly excellent. considering because there's always it, going to be one and if there's only one i yeah. love this one we really workshopped this for a while <laughs> and I think it's so appropriate and funny because, let me speak from the eye, dude, as someone with epilepsy (laughs) and depression and ADHD and other things, I remember people being like, oh, you just have to go vegan to not have epilepsy. You just have to like, you know, you probably manifested that. (laughs) Eat more fruit. Yeah. If you just like, if you do more yoga, it'll probably heal itself. Have you tried lemon and water <laughs> yeah hydrate more. have you tried a coffee enema <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes bitch i have okay i haven't would try you know they're not like bad but a do coffee should, enema yeah but should you be doing it every day absolutely uh, not what? there are people who are like oh yeah i do a coffee enema every morning i'm like you are wait, you wait, have wait. chronic constipation are they putting that's coffee not good in your ass? yes also, dude you're yeah you're, are you fucking kidding i'm sorry like that's yeah insane, caffeine though. straight up and then they're like, well, that decaf. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> also, who has the time, really, to do coffee yeah, enema every morning? Real. That's commitment. That is commitment. I don't want to poo in the bath. I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, you I have to. I tried it once. It was not no, fun. Dude, you have to get butt naked, and then you have to fetal position in the bathtub when there's a tube in your butt, and there's coffee going down, hanging That's from the shower curtain. insane. Into your butthole. Now, listen. I've done it. I've tried it. But do I want to do it every day? Absolutely not. But... More overarchingly, just that sort of like either or thinking that exists in wellness is so toxic. And it's not that like, again, coffee and a in and of themselves, not necessarily bad, right? Like we can probably pick a, a less dramatic thing, but like 
exercise is great for you. For sure. And if you're depressed, also, guess what? Yeah, exercise is good. But it's not the only thing that can help you. Yeah. And if you can't – if that alone is not working, it doesn't mean that you're broken. And it doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. You know? 100%. So speaking from my eye, I have an autoimmune inflammatory skin disorder. And I have had people – approach me on the street strangers and touch me on the shoulder and say I can see that your skin looks really painful have you tried and then they give me a laundry list of honey apple cider vinegar lemon juice this really ridiculous weird like green sludge so So rude. rude and also incredibly Traumatizing. audacity to walk up to a stranger and be like, hey, honey, well, also, I got the solution for you. Excuse me? Yeah, Sorry. but also like the ego inflation that like, yeah, exactly. Like I have the answer and clearly you haven't yeah. tried it. Right. You know, like I know what's best for your skin, you know? And let me tell you this. As someone who is vain as fuck, mm-hmm. I tried literally everything. And the only thing that helped was getting on prescription skincare. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. is it. It is the only thing. I have tried everything else. And that is what we mean in that it may work for you. And that is so wonderful. But to then place blame or responsibility on the person dealing with it makes them feel broken or like they haven't tried hard enough. Mm-hmm. Maybe I didn't use enough lemon juice. Maybe <sighs> this is all my fault. Mm-hmm. And none of these wellness practices exist on their own. It is a holistic ecosystem and keyword system. Oh, maybe you didn't celery juice long enough. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the quota? How many days do I need to celery juice, mm-hmm. baby? <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, but also shout out to celery juice sometimes. Oh, yeah. and yeah. it, it, yeah, we did it this morning, yeah, right? and that's delicious. the point, right? It's more about yes and. Yes and. Um, but yeah. it, it's it, interesting because what we've been talking about as a team recently and what's been coming up, especially as we talk a little bit more about neurodivergency, squiggly brains, ADHD, and what I've definitely experienced personally within the wellness world is this puritanical approach that is pretty extreme that says allopathic medicine is evil western medicine is evil from a holistic viewpoint whatever and i i think what we agree with as a team is holistic means incorporating whatever helps you and that could mean anything and it's not about one thing in exclusion and it's not black and white it's nuanced it's very personal and that that is a journey that you have to go on yourself Yeah, and it's constantly evolving. Yeah, Yeah. and it's okay to change your mind. Yeah, and the thing that could be so healthy for you today... Mic drop. (laughs) The thing that could be, like, the the thing that's saving you today could also be the thing that is most unhealthy for you. Killing you tomorrow. (laughs) No, yeah, you get what I'm saying. I mean, like, gosh, we probably all have a story of something that was, like, totally our wellness house of cards, in our wellness house of cards, our wellness, I don't know, life raft, that, like also eventually became our undoing long distance Ooh. running that same uh, hard same <laughs> okay, for sure for me like raw veganism mm-hmm. yeah Ooh. yeah uh, oh. crossfit Ooh. Uh, yeah, it was rough. Yeah. i committed yeah. hard yeah and it was great for a while also until the it whole wasn't. 30 diet oh oh god Maybe that's break. so honestly it, shadow work i mean shadow work is great to a point, and tell your leg. Uh, you can overdo that. Like, mm. you can't, you can't, I've been making this joke a lot, but you can't, like, shadow work your way out of depression. Right. Or you can't shadow work your way out of, like, ADHD. ADHD, ADHD yeah. yeah. Or chronic illness. Or yep. anxiety. Yeah. Jeez. Oof, that's a good one. Or, I feel like that's such a common perspective. So, yeah, we're going to go into a little roundup of our personal wellness house of cards. To give you a little background. This is a sneak peek of something secret. This is a sneak peek of... It's going to be fucking great. It's going to be great. So, your wellness house of cards is the things, the the ideas, the actions, the products, the the shit that is keeping your well-being together. You know, it's like if it's a bunch... one thread. Yeah, it's that one thread that's like holding it all. It's like if a bunch of toddlers were underneath a trench coat... It's like, okay, who are the toddlers? And pretending to be a whole person that's walking around in the world. 
Too much? Not, not, no, not I literally enough. just saw the little yeah, rascals. The we little have, rascals we yeah. all accept the human experience is difficult. This is a weird situation. And listen, like all we're doing is coping. That's kind of what wellness is. Wellness well, is coping with being a human. Yeah. And, and by, especially now in the pandemic. Yeah. And, and, and like the difference between a healthy coping mechanism and like a not healthy coping mechanism, an unhealthy coping mechanism, one might say, is a very fine line. And sometimes it's just awareness. Yeah, can someone show me that line? Because yeah. I'm very confused. <laughs> also, it's personal. Yeah, very individual. Yeah, I need to yeah. meditate on it, I guess, or like pray about it or something, or journal, or channel. <laughs> One of those things. <laughs> because I have no idea Any what the line is. The I really was struggling with this list because I, I, I don't feel well. Like, I'm not well right now. So there's a thread that's been pulled in my house of cards, or like my house of Darion, since if we're talking about fabric. <laughs> there's been a thread pulled, and my whole, my wardrobe is, is a fray it's really bad so we're going to talk about this and and that's real yeah and also that's okay like yeah. that's why we're here to all talk about it and it's not like it's like what is wellness that's a different definition to everyone yeah this is true i think yes uh, this is very true i think that everybody intuitively n- has a sense of when they're feeling in balance that's the best way that i can describe it right like for me it's like when i feel like i'm well and therefore like in my world of wellness, I feel more in balance and I feel a lot more clarity, even if I'm not sure exactly like tangibly, like in the world, logically, like what I'm doing or what comes next. Cause we don't always know what comes next. And I don't think we're supposed to always know what comes next. Right. But I feel like when I am in that space, I feel more peace. I feel more calm. I feel more confident and relaxed. And I'm not in that space right now, which is okay. Right. That's also a part of the human experience. Yeah. It's a part of life, but it is, it's very interesting to look at those things that I, feel or assume right now should be helping me and like maybe why I'm not doing those things or like maybe those things don't help me anymore which is why I'm not doing them Mm -hmm. you know and so yeah I'd love to kind of go down right because right now all the things that I feel like I'm actually doing (laughs) in my house of cards might cross that line of like (laughs) actual distraction like I watch The Office right like The Office is definitely in my house of cards right now and I definitely use it as a coping mechanism. I don't think that crosses the line. I'm just going to be honest. Yeah. I think the office helps me calm. It gives me, like, like really, it just keeps me. I remember when they took the office off Netflix, tangent, just for a second. And the day that I found out was the day that my boyfriend of six years, we broke up. And I literally went to go watch the office on Netflix, realized it wasn't on there anymore, and they immediately went out to buy an anxiety blanket at 9 o'clock at night. Anxiety, Wait, like a yeah. gravity blanket? Yeah. I call it an anxiety blanket. Yeah. It, there, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of times That's people use it for anxiety. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. um, I couldn't, I literally couldn't cope. I yeah. was like, if did I can't wash the office, I need, it did. I like, it's a 40 oh. pound oh, anxiety so blanket. Yeah. It's really heavy. And I just went on, I got on the couch. I put it over me and I cried and I fell asleep. That yeah. Nice. Yeah. It was nice for the time. You said that so perfectly. Mm-hmm. And I think that the pandemic has shown a lot of people that truly their well being and they're like, mm, I don't know how they cope with the world. It is a, ho- a fine house of cards, right? It's a delicate house of cards. And I think a lot of people have realized things like, oh, I have ADHD or my sexuality is different than I thought it was. Or maybe I actually am anxious mm-hmm. because everything that they've been using to sort of cope and exist in the world and be safe has been pulled away, has maybe been pulled away from them. Mm-hmm. And they've had to, to find new things to help them experience and and be in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And that can be very illuminating. And it just goes to show that systems are really important for us to exist, right? And creating our own systems is important, but also like actively consenting to them and not just sort of like passively trying to like numb yourself out, right? By being like, I'm just going to go down this path. I'm going to use these things. I'm going to create wellness routines and rituals because then I don't have to think about how sad I am. Instead of that being like, you know what? I'm eating macaroni and cheese for the fourth time this week (laughs) because I am really sad. And like, this is what I can do right now. I know that I'll feel better when I eat a vegetable, but right now, this is more important, like, and I will eat a vegetable tomorrow. And, like, that's okay. Yeah. So do you want to share your wellness you house of cards? What's, what's keeping you alive right now? I'm going to be 100% honest with you all. I'm going to tell you what actually is getting me through right now. And maybe some of this is actually distracting me, but this is what I feel in my heart in this moment. The office, I already said. Uh, masturbation, I do pretty consistently at this point. Lunch, lunch, lunch time? Lunch time. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Do your yeah. lunchtime to look If I'm home, I will say Mod, um, the oh. Mod vibrator I'm obsessed with. Oh, nice. Absolutely obsessed with. Also, They're the lube. Oh Yes. Oh, yeah. Their lube is, lube is I, I hear it's really good. I've never tried it, but I do use the Oh Yes clitoral stimulant. It tingles on your clit. Ooh. It's amazing. Is that the air sucking one? No, 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 no. It's okay, a, it's can't a, it's do a lube. I'm sorry. It's a clitoral stimulant oh. lube. Yeah, from Oh Yes. It's okay. freaking amazing. Okay. Surfing has been honestly one of the yeah. biggest yeah. Um, things for me. So I started surfing in March, I think, or I don't know, four months ago. And I'm obsessed with surfing. Like the week after I had my first surf lesson, I bought a wetsuit. I was gifted by my surf instructor with a surfboard, and I just got a new one from him, which is really amazing, and it's like fucking awesome. Sounds um, like someone's got a crush on Janelle. It's, 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 a, it's an interesting situation. I won't say that there isn't something there, but also there's not because like you know, you know there's a whole polyamory thing that I so respect but I'm not I'm completely monogamous <laughs> anyways so there's that cream club we yeah. love it surfing's amazing though I highly recommend it easier than you think and then shopping I've been doing a lot of online shopping and this is where it crosses over into maybe this is a distraction <laughs> because now I am in debt I do have debt <laughs> And my voice goes higher when I say that because it definitely induces you some anxiety. Come out, babe. Yeah, it'll be fine. Everything will be okay. I also have been listening a lot to the Crime Junkie podcast, which has soothed my soul and also terrified me. I know that we're on a podcast right now, so maybe that's weird to plug another podcast. Yeah. But if you like yeah. true crime, okay, great. If you are into true crime, it's been really interesting to me. I've really enjoyed it. I also like the the really basic things. Um, spending maybe not basic. Spending time with my family. I'm a huge family person i live with my dad and my brother and my dogs i'm very grateful for that and i spend a lot of time with them and spending time with friends and my coworkers. like this weekend has been life-giving for me i'm very grateful for this weekend i really need it and um also the self-love fix has been really lovely which is another podcast ran by a black woman who talks about self-care so i those are my things my you kind of skipped out on the last bullet point oh yeah and then well here's the last thing and don't judge me for it. If you do, that's your problem. Aliens. I watch a lot of documentaries, not just about aliens, but also about Bigfoot. There's a Bigfoot documentary on Hulu. Check it out. Bigfoot is real. I will die by that. <laughs> is that the hill you'll die on? That is the hill I will die on. No. Not sponsored by Netflix, but not. Not, but not. Not, not, not sponsored. sponsored. <laughs> We're up to it. And yeah, aliens, I'm obsessed with. My goal in life is to have real contact with the extraterrestrials and that may that be that might be the grays it might be another species of alien i'm open to it i'm open to it all and i recognize that there may be fear there but i am having faith that when that happens i can overcome that fear and like witness the amazing things before me i just had a thought how do you know you haven't talked to an alien before i don't know that it's very possible i feel like it's, open I, up your mind I dude want proof though i want like not i want like irrefutable like that was an alien encounter. I thought I saw a UFO once. You're, My brother thinks it could have been a balloon. So I'm like, there's a little, there's a question there. We, we always find evidence for what we want to believe. This is so true. I feel like you're going to keep looking for evidence. I, here I am. You're not wrong. Even if you get the most blatant <laughs> slap in the face, from, an alien literally comes down and slaps you. I was really upset because Pleiadians are, and even Octarians are always described as being like white blonde like effervescent like really tall lovely white beings and i'm like why are all of the like aliens that are like humanoid type aliens that i've always learned about like always always white and i went down a rabbit hole one night googling black alien species yes. and i but i but the alien that i found was very scary and yeah well that's because white supremacy yeah exactly but i was it was like two o'clock in the morning and i went to sleep and i had sleep paralysis or that alien came to visit me because yeah. it was at the foot of my bed when i woke up you got you got your computer <laughs> yeah, so i'm like <laughs> maybe that was my encounter yeah. that really could have been my and i don't like deny that that could have been a very real thing it was very it was terrifying i'm not gonna lie it was there so that's my story and i'm sticking to it <laughs> I feel like we could have a whole other podcast on how much of the, like, popular wellness, mystical, alien conversation is, like, deeply anti-Semitic and... Mm, deeply white supremacist. Yeah. Deeply white supremacist, yeah. but maybe a story for another day. Yeah. Yeah. Deep you know, podcast. I love your house of cards. Thank you. I'm yeah. working on it. I'm working on it. Adding 
clitoral stimulus lube to cart right now. hundred <laughs> percent. And last thing, can I just add, I had actually like 20 other things in my house of cards list, but I'm not doing those things. And those are things mm-hmm. that I feel like I have been doing in the most, like in my recent past and like for the last few weeks because of like anxiety and depression and like just a lot of stuff happening in my own personal life. I have not, I've fallen off of. And so my staples have been like the office and like all, like the things that I named. And so now I'm kind of at a point where I'm like, okay, well, what does work for me? Like, are those things going to work for me mm-hmm. anymore? Like, I do really want to get back into gardening. I'm letting my garden die right now. Like that pulls my heart out. And, but Maybe yeah, I love it. Maybe needs to die. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe it needs to die. And it's Maybe it's like, Yeah. And for it to like become anew. I also feel like I, I got to the point where I was like, my intuitive gardening skills have gotten as far as they can. I need help. So I think that there's, there's something to that. But yeah. So I'm just saying like, transition's real, man. I don't know. Yeah. Transition is real. It's and ever evolving. Yeah. The house yeah. of cards. Ever evolving, ever changing. Yeah, that was great. Thank you. Stace, I think we're going in a counterclockwise <laughs> direction. <laughs> so what's going on in your house of cards lately? Oh, man. I My house of cards is complex. My house of cards is sprawling. There are multiple rooms, so many wings. So let's just get into it. I also want to preface this by saying shout out to Megan Suter. She is a coach of mine who, when I was at my lowest, my anxiety and depression were at its highest. She asked me to create a list of four things that could help me maintain a baseline of simply existing within my body. And just for everyone here who hears this and they're like, this seems out of touch for me. Mine were observing my plants, going outside, listening to a podcast, and having a nap. Those were my four. A nap. Yeah. Yeah. And every day I had a whiteboard checklist on my fridge and I had to make sure I did three out of the four every day. Those were my baseline. They were simple. I wanted to put brushing my teeth, but I gave myself a little, I gave myself a little more oomph. Mm -hmm. And those four things that are very baseline for me helped heal me from like my lowest place so if like if you're hearing this and you're like this seems out of touch for me right now just know it can be brushing your teeth it can be taking a nap it can be literally walking outside but here we go okay my house of cards every day i use my jade gua sha i use my living libation sea buckthorn oil cleanser shout out to tinks I go on my rich mom walks. Excuse me, explain. So a rich mom walk is you essentially channel the most badass self you can be that day. Whether that is collegiate athlete going to move some energy and you're in sweatpants and a sweatshirt and you've got like weights in your hand. Jock it up. Totally. Jock it up. Butch it up, baby. (laughs) But that could also be putting on your sexiest workout gear putting in your headphones and calling your best friend and like shit talking celebrity gossip. So rich mom walks, they are so important. Vivance, who you a real one mm. getting in my garden, checking on my plants, really connecting with nature. I live somewhere where I can forage and it is so important for me as a tourist to like ground into the green stuff. Cooking and meal prep is also very therapeutic. Coffee is a religion in my house. I personally love the Republica Roasters coffee. The Perfect Storm blend is a godsend. Green blender juice. I like a bok choy, pear, celery, cucumber, cilantro mix. Ooh. That is my favorite. I use Waleda Skin Food. It is truly the most opulent, rich, amazing cream that I have found. Upload. I upload that. Yeah. I also brought it with me. We both brought multiple things of Waleda Skin Food. <laughs> we have three tubes of Waleda Skin Food on the table right now. Yeah. I am That's wearing it. Yeah. I am incredibly lucky to have a sauna on the property that I live on. So another piece of my house or my self-care is sauna time. Bath time as well. I like a ginger rose bubble bath moment. And when all else fails, I put on either a movie where shit blows the fuck up Wayne's World or Call Me By Your Name. So, I mean, a classic. How could you deny it? So, so therapeutic. That list for me is comprehensive. I rotate it. And the thing that I noticed during the pandemic was that I was one out of stock sign away from a meltdown. 
If I went to the local drugstore and they didn't have the thing that I needed, I was like so close to a full blown like panic attack. And part of what makes these lists or these this house of cards so important is that you have backup. You can't get out in the garden because it's raining. You can't go for your rich mom walk. Okay, put on edge of tomorrow or hop in the bath. But all of those things are available when the other pieces of this puzzle aren't available. Pick your poison. And sometimes I have to do all of them in one day. And sometimes one will get me through. But creating these lists for me has been so therapeutic and reminds me that I am so resilient and I have the ability to take care of myself. And when I don't, there is a network of things and people that can remind me to go back to that baseline of have you eaten have you slept do you need to bathe wow mic drop what a great list uh, there Thank is no, a real one mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. that feels so comprehensive i'm inspired because wait till you're my list <laughs> <laughs> great segue wallace <laughs> truly <laughs> it's like <laughs> For all of you out there who are like, I don't have a list. What? Truly inspired. So, yeah. (laughs) Also, take what you need. Leave the rest. Seriously, always. I would like to incorporate the Wayne's World ritual into my ritual. Wayne's World. Wayne's World. Party Party on. on. Excellent. (laughs) Wow. It's a hard act to follow. (laughs) Oh, no. We broke Wallace. (laughs) No, no. Yeah, exactly. She's come alive. (laughs) Give me one hard kombucha. <laughs> Ready to go. And Put that on a rider. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we were driving around Joshua Tree. And Stacy in the back. We're in the back seat. We were talking about self-care. And I was like, I don't do a lot of that. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Then you interviewed all of us. Yeah. <laughs> Stacy said, hey. What are your self-care routines? And I was like, mm, I don't know. I'm not really sure. So I felt slightly put on the spot. And then I had to think about it. I was like, all right. I don't know. I work out. <laughs> I work out. <laughs> she works out. <laughs> <laughs> so in my wellness house of cards, we've got Pilates at the top. Because I want to go into a place where someone tells me what to do. And I can only think about the Pilates. I want it to be hard. But I like a difficult Pilates. So it's in there. Honestly, up there for me is co-working. Aww. Oh my god, my heart. Aww. Oh my god. I need to be with people in person. I love it. <laughs> so co-working gives me a lot of energy. Being around people inspires me. I like to see people. I like to be out in the streets, see what's going on. <laughs> so co-working has changed my life since July. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. I recommend. Yeah. But it's hard to find. If you don't have a co-working place near you, grab a friend, go to a coffee shop. When I was in New York, I did that with a few friends, and it changes your day for me. Then we have skincare. It's a new journey for me. So being with ladies on this trip who are professional skincare experts, it's been interesting to think about skincare as an act of devotion to self, self self-love, which That's not a new idea, but for me, it's a little bit new in accepting that this is cool, this is fine, this is okay to indulge in and incorporate into my routine. Skincare. Do I know how to do it? No. Am I learning? Yes. Oh, learning hard. (laughs) Wallace is asking all the right questions. I've witnessed it. I take notes. Also, sneak peek, we have something coming up called Top Shelfy. Shop My Shelf. Yeah. Which does work. (laughs) Where we're going to talk about our favorite products. Also, side note, I'm not a professional skincare expert. I just spend money like a professional skincare yeah, expert. Same. To be honest, my list is a little short, and it could be expanded. And that's where I'm going to end and pass it off to Michelle Pazan. What's up? What's up? <laughs> okay. This is my wellness house of cards. I've been building my wellness house of cards for a very long time because, as we said earlier, I am unwell. And so I have been unwell my whole my whole life but right now my wellness house of cards are things that are like keeping me functioning and happy and feeling like the best version of myself that i can be right now the thing that i do every single morning without fail is wake up before m- my partner take my dog outside and absolutely guzzle like 32 ounces of water with element the electrolyte salts they are so good they make me feel alive 
It is so good, but it's not sugary. It's like salty, and I really enjoy it. And then I make a coffee. I drink the coffee, and then I eat gummy vitamins because I'm 32. So I take my prenatal gummy vitamins, and it sparks joy. It makes me feel good. I can't really do my day until I've done those things, or I'm like kind of a frazzled mess. Next thing adding white clothes to any shopping cart really online and just not buying them because you guys I am trying to figure out wedding week outfits it's impossible do I need any of these things like can I just wear the same thing I'm like deep in bride propaganda right now it's whatever it's neither here nor there but let's just say I started listening to a bride's podcast like a month ago because I started having a little bit of a panic attack because I was like do I need to buy my in-laws a gift and then I like googled it and then this podcast came up and so I started listening to it and then they were like here's why you shouldn't do airbrush makeup and why you should get extensions. And I'm texting my sister, like, should I get extensions? And she's like, have you seen your hair? Right. Like, yeah, where would they you go? have too much hair. To yeah, <laughs> exactly. She's like, you are, you have so much hair. Like, you don't need extensions. And I was like, are you sure? Do you want extensions? She's like, no, nobody wants extensions. And I was like, I think, I don't know. I'm listening to this podcast, so I don't even know what they look like, but they say they look great. And she, she's like, no, you're fine. So anyways, on this podcast, they're like, when else in your life do you get a whole week where you just get to, like, make up outfits for yourself and you get to pick outfits and accessorize them every day and it's like fun and I was like you know what you're fucking right dude that's cool I'm gonna be the bride archetype but the cool bride archetype Mm. but my fashion sense is not at the it's not at the skill level of my like dream of like this what archetype I want to embody so I'm recklessly adding things to cart and this looks good on the six foot tall 97 pound model Will the, this, I don't know. So anyways, I'm doing that. I'm doing a lot of that. Um, open. I'm still doing open. Oh, I love that for you. Shout out to open our meditation and oh, breathwork app good. that we love. We'll put the link below in the show notes in case you want to sign up. It's, you get a free 30 day trial. It's awesome. I can't recommend it enough as someone who does not like spending a lot of time doing meditation or breath work, just doing it for like 10 minutes. I noticed such a big difference, even in the middle of my day. We went to a breath work class together as a team on the beach. It was so fun. Yeah. I'm really, I, I really like that. And just knowing, honestly, just knowing that it's there, yeah. like knowing that I'm, I'm, I can grab it whenever I want to. That like kind of is. <laughs> the support of like, oh, great, I can, I can, I can use that. And then my skincare, like we've all kind of said skincare or makeup or something. And like, I really like taking care of my skin and like n- nourishing myself and, and like adorning myself for so long. I hated my body. I hated the way I looked and I had such bad skin and to like, I guess, care for it now and like upkeep it is such a pleasure. And I really, I like it. It's fun for me. Like, it's really fun for me. I also, like, love putting together potions, you know? I, like, I love choice. So I love being able to choose for my skincare. Like, okay, I'm going to use this thing because I want to feel this way. Or, like, oh, I'm noticing that my skin is super dry because I didn't drink enough water today. So here's how I'm going to, like, meet myself in the middle. I also feel like my my skin is, like, sort of a barometer sometimes of how I'm caring for myself. Ooh, yeah. You know? Like that dry thing. Snaps. <laughs> thank you for affirming me okay. yeah but my favorite my favorite skincare things right now are this Kiehl's ferulic acid essence because your skincare apparently does not work as well it doesn't like sink into the pores as well if you don't use an essence that's why people use them and I really have noticed a difference in like how moisturizing and all the other things that I use, like how much they work. So plus it like smells really good. It feels really good on your skin. So I love it. Also the Tower 28 SOS spray. I just, I really like this brand. It's Asian American owned by a woman founder who has eczema and this SOS spray like gets rid of everything like dry skin, pimples, like anything that's like sort of like mm, flustered or, or congested. It's just, oh, it's so good. And I actually spray it before um, I put my mask on, if I haven't like switched my mask around and if I'm getting mask knee. And also the Violette FR Petal Bouche Red Lipstick is my go-to. Like it's been for a while and it definitely helps me like embody certain archetypes that I'm trying to call in right now. So yeah, that's truly, I know this isn't good, but like the way that I dress up this meat suit definitely contributes to my wellness house of cards. We all have things that are aesthetic 
mm-hmm. or maybe we don't all, but like a lot of people have things that are aesthetic that makes them feel good. When you feel good on the outside, it does definitely reflect how you feel on the inside. You know, like I get my eyebrows done. I'm a whole new woman. Don't yeah. talk to me. You know what I'm saying? Like I am, don't come for I don't, me. Don't don't come you for me. Be I just won't have the time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I won't have the time. So yeah, Game I line. think that's a beautiful thing. I I yeah, I think it's a beautiful thing. I also say to throw that in because I think a couple of us have tried this product and I've been just, like I will swear by it is the Ilia yeah. um, tinted sunscreen I I love makeup I am obsessed with makeup as well and it makes me feel good but I also have anxiety when I put on makeup about having to take it off mm-hmm. so when I don't feel like putting on makeup I just put on the sunscreen and I feel like I have makeup on because I basically do but it's like not as intense it's so good yeah also as a fellow skincare obsessive I tried the essence today and I will upvote that till I die. That <laughs> shit is like liquid gold. It feels so good on. It smells fantastic. And I actually think the every other product feels so much better because I used it. And I can't believe I was today years old. <laughs> what? It's so annoying, right? It's like, oh, God, this does work. <laughs> it's so annoying. God, damn. <laughs> yeah. Science is real. <laughs> Fuck. Well, anyways, yeah, I mean, like, you know, I think for all of these things, like, I don't want to be, a, I don't want to be 100% reliant on anything. And I feel like sometimes when I don't feel good in my outfit, it really can throw off my energy for the day. When, oh, when you're, like, driving someone, you're like, I hate this outfit. I just hate, I hate what I'm wearing. Or if your pants are too tight. Yes. Oh. Yes. And, and, like. I think that that's what we, why we, we've already, everyone's already said it, but like, why you get other things, right? Where you're like, okay, this isn't going to be, it's not an end all be all, but it does contribute, obviously, in clothes cognition. Do a Google. We did an episode on it a couple, couple weeks ago. So yeah, that stuff. Also, it's scented candle season, which is, <laughs> <Not season. laughs> yeah, it's spooky it's like, candle season. Wait, it's, <laughs> it's pumpkin spice season. I say embrace your basic pumpkin spice self because now pumpkin spice is just accepted. It's accepted. It is in, it's part of the zeitgeist. But I really like PF Candle Company. I think I've mentioned them a couple of times, but all their candles are awesome. I brought their incense here and we've been burning it and they have um, some amazing like seasonal candles. I'm obsessed with the spruce one. It is it is so good. good. Yeah, I'm gonna take you to the. We'll take you to the store. <laughs> you gotta go to the store. I hope uh, you might come. <laughs> you gotta go to the store. Wallace, yeah. Keep that in. Yeah, and TikTok. Like, I just let's let's land this plane. We started by talking about memes and how like memeing something or ideating around something is fun and gets your wheels turning and like gets you out of your failure tolerance, fear of like, what if I'm dumb? What if I'm stupid? And I, when I see. Like when I scroll through TikToks and I start thinking about like, how could I make something like this? What does this sound look like? And I start to like study, <laughs> so psychotic, study all of the memes, everyone making those videos. And I'm like, okay, what is this? What's funny about this? And then I'm able to like create the situation. It makes me so much more creative in every other part of my life. And also like, you got to have fun. Like, what is the point of being here if we're not going to have fun and, like, joke about our stuff? Uh, finally, my last thing are the pillow slides, slippers, comfy shoes, non-slip bathroom home shoes, thick bottom women's sandals, summer flip flops. I'm sorry, are, are we reading that? <laughs> but we've all worn them this trip and can confirm 10 out of 10 would purchase from AliExpress and wait 6 to 16 weeks for delivery. <laughs> would do it. Not mad about it. I mean, Michelle is so committed to this shoe. That no matter where we went, you're like, it's on my foot. For reference, they're kind of like Yeezys. Like, they're like Yeezys. Okay, so I was a professional dancer for a really long time. I was an ultra marathon runner. I have arthritis in my feet. My feet hurt all the time. I can't really wear anything but sneakers or dance co clogs. And even then, my feet still hurt. And these are these, like, super comfy, foam, ugly boats slides. When I tell you... Oh, my God. Get them for your mom. Get them for your dad. Get them for stocking stuffers. Get them for everyone in your house. Get them for yourself. They are so comfortable. Well worth it. And that's it. I think Thank that's you. really excellent. TikTok, I think two of you said it. Two of yes. you said TikTok. I need to add that to mine. Again, borderline distracting, but mm. I love the perspective that you come from with TikTok because I don't think about it like, well, how can I get inspiration? I'm like, I just need to like distract myself and laugh and like see other yeah. people's shit, which is also okay too sometimes. But it's both. Yeah. And like also TikTok can be a place of 
validation, being seen, seeing yourself in others. And sometimes that can unlock pieces of you that you thought were private or that shouldn't be seen. And when you see someone else owning their messy ass life fully on camera with no filter, you're like, you know what? Hold my earrings. Give mm-hmm. me that mic. Mm-hmm. And if anyone's shaming you for enjoying TikTok, maybe they're a boomer. I'm yeah. not sure. Or <laughs> a misogynist. <laughs> or perhaps. fucking boring. I mean, or just a hater. Yeah, yeah. Just, just find your joy on TikTok. And everywhere. Hashtag. Okay. Pinterest, we don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. Go find well, your joy. Joseph Campbell says, find your bliss. Follow your bliss. No, follow your, follow your bliss. <laughs> And right. what's your Joseph yeah. Campbell? Joseph Campbell says, really? follow your bliss. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's nice. Okay. We've talked about ambient research before, right? We've talked about active research and ambient research. We talked about it in the systems class, and we talk about it in the digital altars class, and we've talked about it as a team. And, you know, like when you're experiencing the world, that's what we're doing. What we did today is ambient research, right? Like we're experiencing the world, and we're like clocking these connections, these points that like, Oh, our reference points or that are, are like moments of clarity or that land for us. And like being able to bring all of those things together, that ambient research, recall it, which is why you need a system to recall it. But so it's useful. And then like metabolize it and make it yours and apply it to your life. That's wellness, right? Like yeah. that is, <laughs> that's the point. Yeah. Shout out to Notion for Magical Baddies. <laughs> yeah. No, but you're you're absolutely right. I feel like oftentimes when we think about wellness, it it comes, or we think about it through a lens. I say we, but like people, some people think about it through a lens of like, oh, I need to be meditating all the time, or I need to be journaling all the time, or, you know, I need to be doing something that like seems spiritual-esque, uh, listening to Deepak Chopra, or, like reading a book. And it's like, no, 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 wellness is like, it's a it's a balance, right? And I think something that was said in the very beginning, again, landing the plane, it's really all about what works for you mm-hmm. and what makes you feel good, what makes you feel balanced, what makes you feel... I feel like when you feel confident in the way that you're living your life, like that's a really good telltale sign of like, oh, I'm I'm in wellness, like I'm in balance, I'm I'm living a life that is like geared towards wellness because I feel well, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think you've heard a couple of us say at some point, like we're not well, like I'm not I'm not well, I don't feel in balance. Again, I think that's part of the ebb and flow of life, the part of the human experience. We're not always going to feel that way, but it's up to me to kind of explore all of the areas and the avenues and the aspects of life not just like oh I need to go back to journaling right because journaling was a big thing that I used to do and like Stacey was talking about earlier I don't do anymore and like instead of beating myself up for that it's like okay well maybe I'm at a time in my life where I don't need to journal maybe there's something else that is going to help me and it's like taking walks or you know hanging out with friends or whatever it may be you know it's like it's about really having the audacity to like go out and live life and explore and experiment and find what brings you joy and what makes you feel good and yeah that's pretty much what I have to say about that 100 percent. and I think it's to what you're saying it's fluid it's ever evolving it's changing and even when you say I'm not well I'm kind of like mm, according to what standard yeah what are you measuring that against it, and you have to question that constantly yeah. of who's barometer am I measuring my wellness against yeah. especially in this world of Quite you know awesome. yeah goop whatever your barometer is unconscious or conscious that you're measuring yourself against you kind of have to check yourself and be like wait is this true yeah. is this true wellness for me and yeah. what does that actually look like and that's why we talk a lot about system if the system is not working you can change it. It's not that you're fucked up. It's not that you're broken. It's not that you're unwell. It's like maybe you need something else. And it's just time for you to pivot and time for you to switch it up. When you were saying I'm unwell, I'm like, no, you're not. Man, I feel like it, but I feel where you're coming from. But also that's a personal thing. Like that, that's up to you. And I think when I feel unwell for me, it's like, oh, I'm not in integrity with myself. Yeah. And it's just information. Aye. feeling unwell is just information what you're doing right. isn't working it's not landing maybe you're not in alignment maybe it's close but because it's not quite working it's just information to tell you can you redirect can you open the scope can you find something on the peripheral that feels better and if you can't find the smartest person in the room and ask them yeah. mm-hmm. I would lo- yes upvote yep and I would say even 
it's just your how you're feeling is information. Yeah. And the judgment is that it's unwell. Mm. It's ju- you just feel a certain way, mm-hmm. and you're deciding that, not you, but okay, and yeah. and a person. We decide, oh, that means unwell to me. But I would argue, like, just you feeling. Like, wellness is just witnessing and choosing. That is what wellness is. That's what well-being is. It's being able to see something, recognize it, and then make a choice about it and how, what you want to do with it. Yeah. I agree with everything. Mine the data, okay? Mine mm-hmm. the data. Mm-hmm. Like Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> On our next Transition. podcast episode. <laughs> Crypto. Stay tuned. Not now. Not no. Not no. We love you, and we're going to leave you there. <laughs> if you made it this far, you. God bless you. God bless you. Yep. We stand you. We love you. Be well. <laughs> you are well. Or we well. are all well. <laughs> it's all a spiral. Choose your own adventure. You know what I mean? Everything is okay. <laughs> Evolution is a spiral, motherfuckers. And the only thing that's constant is change. Just use the best one. Just use the best one. Cliche after cliche after yeah. cliche. <laughs> so, you know, let us know. What's your wellness house of cards? DM us. Please, let us know. Hit us up. We want to know. And let us know whose wellness house of cards do you want to see? Maybe. And Marie Tendler? Maybe, oh. I don't know, who's another celeb- Lady Gaga? Rihanna. Adam Rippon? Beyonce. Julio Torres, come on. Yo Yo Ma? Oh, <laughs> interesting. All right. Pack it up. All right, we're out of here. It was nice knowing you. Thanks for tuning into this episode. It was either 15 minutes long because it all got cut, or it was 100 hours long. Thanks for listening to us at 1.5 speed. That's probably reasonable. And we love you. So thanks for listening. Make sure you rate, review, and subscribe. I know that sounds so trite because everyone says it, but it really does help us. And uh, we want to keep making this thing. And we, we love making it for you. So if you could just throw us a bone. We're a boner. That'd be great. Give us five stars. And if you want to write a review, you can send a screenshot of your review to us at the link in our show notes, and you'll be entered to win the prize of the month. You are like the reason we get to do our jobs. So thanks for supporting us and co-creating this space with us. And we'd love to see you in the Holisticism Hub. If you <laughs> liked this general brand of humor there's a lot more of it and like 3,500 people who also dig the same stuff that we're talking about here and i'm there a lot come visit me yeah you can visit janelle she's the best community leader ever i love everyone <laughs> seriously we love you and appreciate you and send you all the good energetic hugs when you do it thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the internet bye, bye. bye.